here, but it, I think it's worth kind of exploring because I get this question a lot. You supplying UV for fossorial species, so that you, I have people, you know, with uh, sand boas or, or you know, burrowing snakes that you don't see most of the day, and they always ask if they need to supply UV. So I assume the answer, or I know the answer is yes, but maybe you could quickly touch on that uh, w with those species that spend a lot of time underground. Yeah, I, it, it is a difficult one because you would look at it and say the animal's under the ground. How could it possibly use light? Well, they're not always under the ground. And, um, you know, we know the different adaptations in the skin and skin coloration. You know, they can they can spend long periods of time deep underground and have no exposure. They can come over ground and have a bit of exposure or they can come just particularly with sand boas, just below this. You know, you've got to think the areas where the Kenyan sand boa is, okay, and, and even the um, like Russian sand boa and, you know, these ones which are more... Um, unlike rosy boas, which will obviously sit out and bask, uh, but the ones that are more fossil, um, you know, they're, they're existing in environments that have colossally high UV indexes for many months of the year and long periods over the day. There is a vast amount of energy pouring down over them. They might only have to... Um, expose a very small part of the skin for a very short period of time just to top up what they need to. Um, so, I, you know, I I keep um, legless, really quite fossil legless skinks as well, little tiny Egyptian things, and they spend most of their lives under the sand, the most boring pet you could ever have. <laughs> Fantastic as, a, as an enthusiast to see them getting on with their reproductive cycles. But every now and again, once or twice a month, they'll come out and sit on the rocks and bask for 20 minutes to an hour, and then they'll go back off again straight under the ground. Um, so I think the, 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 the only advice that I've given in the past is, well, look, if you want to include UV, just like you feel that you need to include heat, because you can't have heat in the wild without having visible light and UV. It's all mm -hmm. a one homogeneous source. Um, well, then we put it in and we put it in in a safe and measured way and we leave it running all day long. And if they want to use it, they will. If they don't, they won't. At least you've done your best. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the only advice that I can give. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's almost in an ironic sense a Kenyan sand boa might need a higher powered UV to, to replicate what they're getting in those you know, African deserts where it's just ridiculously yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah, even though for the majority of the time they probably won't be using it. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. We can't second guess nature. That's the issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's jump to the second one, which is uh, in what they're ingesting. And I actually want to, we won't talk about food today because I want to make sure we, we cover everything we want to, but I'm really curious about humidity cycles and moisture. And I know that, I think you kind of loop that into the... Well,